Jay Gurudev. So among the four ages, the Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, the Dvapara Yuga and the Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga is actually the best because in this age, the Lord mercifully makes it easy to obtain His grace just through the chanting of His name. As it is stated in the Vedic scriptures, whatever is achieved in Satya Yuga by meditation, in Treta Yuga by offering ritual sacrifices, and in Dvapara Yuga by the temple worship, is achieved in Kali Yuga by chanting the names of Lord Keshava, congregationally. As today, our surrendering is very material-oriented, the Lord makes it easy for us to attain moksha, to attain liberation and realization. It means that all our little efforts on the spiritual path bring great rewards in this Kali Yuga time. The attractive temptations of the material world daily surround us, and new desires are created in our mind by internet and the society. There was a saint of Maharashtra called Guru Ravidas, and he stated in one of his poems, Nam is the only means to cross the ocean of the world. Never leave the ruder of the name of God. He was famous, especially in Pandapur, in Rajasthan and Varanasi. He was born in a humble family of cobblers, of untouchables, and earned his living by making shoes. He was also a fully God-realized soul detached from this world from the very moment of his birth. He was reborn in such circumstances because he disobeys the order of his guru, Swami Ramanan, in a previous lifetime. As a result of it, he was cursed to be born in a family of cobblers. The merciful Swami Ramanan was still in the body when Ravidas was reborn again. His love for his disciple was so boundless that he waited patiently for the disciple to be reborn again. When Swami Ramanand met Ravidas, Ravidas recognized his guru immediately. Swami Ramanand instructed Ravidas to learn his family's profession and make shoes for the pilgrims while keeping his mind always firmly focused on God. From that day on, he started to make the shoes for pilgrims and Vaishnavas while continuously chanting the name of the Lord. Even though he fulfilled the order given by his guru and his father so faithfully, due to his natural detachment to the material world, he would often give pilgrims shoes for free and frequently donate the money to the, that he earned to the poor. This eventually angered his father so much that he kicked Ravidas out of the house. The humble saint praised the Lord for this opportunity because now, living alone, he could sing the glories of the Lord freely. He built a small hut just outside of Pandapur where he sang the name of the Lord days and nights while he was sewing the shoes. He used to sing at the sight of the flame of Maya, men rush like moths. Without the wisdom imparted by the Guru, no one escapes. And in another verse, he says, the ocean of the world is extremely dreadful. 
Why does you not understand this, O oh foolish one? Know that Nam, the recitation of God's name, is the boat and the Guru is the rudder thereof. During the early stage of his life, the Guru of Ravidas was Ramanand and Kabir was a contemporary of Ravidas. And after the departure of Ramanand from this earth, Ravidas took Kabir as his guru. Being born in a low caste family, Ravidas was looked down upon by the Brahmins who considered him unqualified for practicing devotion to God. To preach and practice holiness was a sacrilege in their eyes. During his study time in the Patshala, you know, the open uh, institution where a guru was teaching, Ravidas became friend of the son of his guru, Shardanand. One day, both children were playing hide and seek. Ravidas had won the first game and the second game was won by his friend. Then. They were unable to keep playing because it was already dark. So they decided to continue playing in the following morning. Next morning, Guru Ravidas waited for a long time for his friend and finally went to his friend's home to get him. When he arrived there, he saw that his friend's parents and neighbors were all weeping. He asked about his friend to one of them and was very surprised upon hearing the news of his friend's death during the night. He was brought by the father of his friend to the place where the dead body of his friend was lying. At that moment, he told his friend that it was not sleeping time, it was time to get up and play hide and seek. As Guru Ravidas was blessed by supernatural spiritual powers since his birth, his friend suddenly became alive, like awakening from a deep sleep after hearing his word. In one of his poems, Ravidas says, Many times have I been born and died. I shall not again fall in this whirlpool. My boat is weak, but the Lord in the form of the Sadguru is my boatman. Taking the name, the mantra, from him I shall at once ferry across. After the death of his father, he requested his neighbor's support for the last rites at the bank of the Ganges. However, the Brahmin community was against it saying that the Ganga water which flows from the place of rites towards the main city would be polluted. Ravidas felt very sad and helpless. However, he never lost his patience and faith. And he started praying for the peace of his father's soul. At that time, there was a heavy thunderstorm and the river started flowing in the reverse direction. Suddenly, a big wave of Ganga's water covered his father's remains and washed them away. Since then, it is said that at this place, the Ganga's water is flowing in the reverse direction. Some time later, the king needed to prepare for war. As he was preparing all the necessary utensils, for his soldiers, he also needed many pairs of shoes. The king asked every cobbler in the area to make thousand shoes within a week's time. So all the shoemakers were overjoyed hearing that, as it was an opportunity to earn a lot of money. But how could such a task be possible for a devotee such as Ravidas. How to make thousand shoes within a week when he would often spend so much of his time lost in his thoughts about the Lord 
and singing his prayer. Usually, he would make only a few pairs of shoes per week, which was just enough for him to sustain his life. When six days had already passed, the poor Ravidas had not even finished cutting all the leather required for a thousand pairs of shoes. He knew that if he did not finish his task, he would be punished by the king. Realizing that everything in life happens according to the will of the Lord, he continued doing his best and singing his bhajan. How could the merciful Lord leave this devotee helpless in this situation? In the evening of the last day of the week, a young man came to Ravida. He told him that he heard from other cobblers that Ravidas is looking for a person that could help him with his work. Where are you from, young man? What is your name? The Ravidas inquired. The man replied, my name is Rangan and I come from Pandari. Ravidas was overjoyed and he invited the man into his shop, convinced that he came as help from God. He said, let us do whatever we can this night, even if we cannot complete thousand pairs of shoes. The young man told him not to worry and assured him that he was very experienced and capable to complete the work in a night. Ravidas then asked him to stitch while he cut the material. Before they started to work, Rangan noticed a tempura in the corner of the shop and he asked Ravidas, do you sing? Ravidas replied that he loved singing the name of the Lord, but he is afraid that if he starts singing, it will only slow down their work. Rangan encouraged him to sing anyway saying that when he hears bhajans, his work goes faster. So Ravidas happily agreed. And he was singing the name of the Lord and composing poems like this one. Nam is the root of all knowledge. Nam is the door to salvation. The one whose heart is occupied by the Lord falls not into the entanglements of the world. And the work began. Ravidas joyfully singing the glories of Lord Krishna and cutting the leather and Rangan stitching the shoes. Ravidas was surprised to see that when he finished the first song, the young man had finished already several pairs of shoes. And Ragan said that he can only work so fast because he hears the songs of the Lord, which fill his heart with joy. He reassured Ravidas that if he continued singing, they would surely finish thousand shoes by the morning. Late into the night, Ravidas began to feel as if Rangan was Pandurenga himself. He could swear that he could see the image of Pandurenga in this young man. So he asked, finally, are you Pandurenga? Rangan just smiled and replied, you are so absorbed in the name of the Lord that you see him everywhere, even in me. They both laughed and continued their work. When the sun had risen after an entire night of singing and working in the joyful atmosphere, Rangan had completed all thousand pairs of shoes, as he promised. Ravidas praised Rangan for his excellent work. Rangan then said to him that after an entire night of work, he needed to take a bath. So he went to the river Ravidas invited him to return after his ablutions for an oil bath, clothes, a meal, and whatever money the king would give for the shoes. 
Ravidas was not even slightly concerned about the material goods. He just wanted to do his duty, happy to renounce the fruits of his actions and give it all to Rangam. The young man agreed and went to the river to take his bath. Meanwhile, the king's soldiers visited the shop to collect all the shoes. Seeing their extraordinary quality, they rewarded Ravidas with a lot of money. Even after they left, Rangan had not returned. A bit worried, Ravidas locked his shop and went to the river to look for his young friend. Rangan was not there. Ravidas inquired with the people where Rangan could be, and he understood that no one had seen him this morning. So he returned to his shop and began looking for him in the bazaar and other places, but could not find him anywhere. Eventually, it dawned on him. Rangan of Pandari was none other than Lord Pandurenga himself. Of course, he came in the evening after the doors of the temple were closed and went back to Pandapur before dawn so that the priest did not notice his disappearance. When Ravidas realized this, he fainted instantly. How merciful and humble is this dark lord who came to help him in the middle of the night so that the saint could continue chanting his sweet song. When Ravidas became conscious again, he took the oil, the dress and the food that he earlier prepared for Rangan, as well as all the money given by the king and rushed to Pandapur. When he reached the temple, he explained to the priests what happened and gave them all the gifts, so the Lord can be bathed in oil and receive a new dress from him, along with all the money. And that was just the beginning of the miracles that happened later in the life of the great Guru Ravidas. This saint later became a guide and a guru for such great soul as King Pipa and Mirabai herself. He wrote many touching poems praising the Lord, such as this one. Upon seeing poverty, people laugh and jeer at me, and such was my plight. But now I hold all the powers of creation in the palm of my hand. All because of your mercy, O Lord. You know I am nothing, O Ram, destroyer of fear. Jai Gurudev.